Okay, the first thing this worksheet prompts you to do is type in cosine A sine A to see what kind of path it takes. And you should see that it's taking a circular path. And in fact, it's just the unit circle. And this should make sense because if you remember when we first talked about the unit circle, we said in the unit circle, X is cosine and Y is sine. And that's all we're doing here. We're saying X is cosine, Y is sine. But now we're having our input be a time so that we have an object that's just continually traveling around the unit circle as time goes on. So the table first asked you to determine X and Y at these different inputs, which this is, this is a throwback to unit 7 and unit 8 for you to know what cosine of pi over 6 is and what sine of pi over 6 is. But eventually you have to start remembering these values somehow. So this is our first quadrant of our unit circle. That's this part. And then once we pass pi over 2, we're going to cross over into the second quadrant and then the third quadrant and the fourth quadrant. And then as time goes on, this object will continually travel around. This animation linked in the slide is just the animation that you came up with by typing in cosine A in sine A. So then the next part of the worksheet mixed it up and changed the frequency of x so that now x is cosine 2t while keeping the frequency of y the same, sine t. So the best way to picture this was to first type in cosine 2a sine a to Desmos, and you should have seen a point that was kind of going like this, just back and forth kind of in the sideways parabola. So then when we fill in the table, we just need to plug in 0 through pi over 2 to these different things. And this shows you the calculation. Cosine of 2 times 0 is the same as cosine of 0, which is just 1. Okay, cosine of 2 times pi over 6 is cosine of pi over 3, which is 1 half. Cosine of 2 times pi over 4 is cosine of pi over 2, which is 0. Cosine of 2 times pi over 3 is negative 1 half. And then cosine of 2 times pi over 2 is the same as cosine of pi, which is negative 1. So there's our x values. Y values are exactly the same as they were in that other table, right? Because it's still just sine of uh, t. So it's 0, 1 half, root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2, and 1. So notice that y is only positive, but x is positive and then it's negative. So when you think about your coordinates... Okay, our y is only positive, so we're only, um, we're only up here y-wise, but x is going negative and positive. So for this first part, 0 to pi over 2, we should get a curve that exists in both of these two quadrants of our axis. So here it is. Okay, this is our, this is our first part, 0 to pi over 2. And it, the, the worksheet prompted you to draw this picture because it wants you to connect what sine of x and cosine of two and how cosine of two x relate to this curve. So again, this parametric definition, it's taking cosine two x and it's making that the x value of this curve. And it's taking sine x and making it the y value of this curve. So if you notice, we can we can break this down even further to right here to this part. Okay. That is where x and y, x and y, are both positive. So that is this part of this blocked off part. Okay, x and y are both positive. Notice that x uh, cosine 2x starts as being 1, and y starts as being 0. So we have our point at 1, 0. And then what happens to x? x approaches 0. So x goes this way. What happens to y? y gets bigger, right? So y is going up. So then we get this part. And then down here, we have x is now negative, but y is positive. So x is negative, y is positive, and now we get this part of the curve. Okay, we're going to break this down even further. So here, we can see how our x and our y values are determined a little bit closer. So cosine 2t sine t. If I plug in t equals 2 pi, or pi over 3, then I have cosine of 2 pi over 3, sine of pi over 3, which is going to be negative 1 half root 3 over 2, right? Cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half. Sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. So this is our x value. That's our y value. So we're going to take this x value and go over here, negative 1 half. Take this y value. Okay, that's our vertical value. Our point at pi over 3 is negative 1 half root 3 over 2. It's negative 1 half root 3 over 2. Remember again, the blue is our x, the green is our y on this parametrically defined curve.
Okay, what about at 5 pi over 6? Well, cosine of, well, it's 2 times 5 pi over 6 is just 5 pi over 3. And then sine of 5 pi over 6, that's 1 half comma 1 half. So at 5 pi over 6, our x value is 1 half and our y value is also 1 half. They're both equal to 1 half. So then we're going to go positive 1 half, positive 1 half. That's our point at 5 pi over 6. Okay, again, determined by the x and the y value, cosine 2 and sine of just 1. Okay. And then what about at t equals 0? That's cosine 0, sine 0, which is 1 comma 0. Okay, so x is 1, y is 0. That's just this point right here, right? So you can see, again, that the blue is the x value, the green is the y value, and then the x and the y value are tracing out this curve. So this next picture is the really confusing one to understand. So this really breaks it down by section. So again, remember that we're just using these two curves to show what's happening to our x and happening to our y value on this curve. Okay, so section one, both x and y are positive. So, and what happens is we start with x being one and y being zero, okay? They're both positive, and we have our x value getting smaller and our y value getting bigger, so our, our point is moving this way, which is why we're saying section one is the one that's pointing this way. We start here and we go like that. Okay, at the end of section one, we hit section two, where now x has gone negative, but y is positive. x negative, y positive, and what's happening is we're approaching, at the end of section two, we have our x value is negative one and our y value is positive one. So that's all the way up here. Okay, so we've gone from here to here. And then notice that section three is just a mirror of section two. It's like section two reflected. So we're now here, but what's happening now is our x value is going back towards zero and our y value is getting smaller. So we're just gonna hit here and then we're gonna start coming back this way. At the end of section three, we have, we have our x value is now zero and it's gonna go positive again and our y value is still positive. So that's right here. Now x is going positive again, y is positive still, but our y value is now approaching zero, okay, as our x value slowly gets bigger. And now we hit here, okay, the end of section four, we now have section five. Now in section five, we have that x is positive right? Cosine 2x is positive, but y is negative. So now we're down here. This is section 5, where x is positive and y is negative. x positive, y negative. And then we hit section 6. Okay, section 6, we have that they're both negative. Both x and y are negative. We can see that because x and y are both below the axis. So in section 6, we have both of them are negative, and we're approaching this point where they're both negative 1. Negative 1, negative 1. Oh, that's right here. Okay, and then section seven is just an exact mirror of section six. So we're at negative one, negative one. They're both still negative, but now we're going back the other way. And we hit section eight. And section eight is an exact mirror of section five. Remember section five was the one where we went here. Okay, it's the exact mirror. So now we're just gonna be going back the other way. And now we're back at the start. So this picture is really meant to show you why this point is going like that and then like that and then like that and then like that because we have to examine what's happening to the x and the y values separately and that's what this picture allows us to do. So this is what happens when the frequency of the x value is twice as fast as the y value but it actually gets really crazy if you mess with this frequency even more and make it something like 2.2. Okay, if the frequency is 2.2 while the other one's 1, it makes this crazy shape, right? And then we can keep going. Okay, uh, <coughs> just to quickly explain how this works. So cosine AT cos minus cosine cubed BT, sine CT, sine cubed DT. A is 1, B is 80, C is 1, D is 80. It makes this shape. Or if you make A80, B1, C1 and D80, it makes this shape. So this is telling you what A, B, C, and D are, and then it makes these crazy looking three-dimensional shapes that are actually existing in two space. And you can plug this into Desmos. I tried to do uh, this one in Desmos. It doesn't look quite as nice, but you can still see the general shape, right? 180, 180. So you can mess around with that if you want. And then you can see, okay, if in three space, we can sh we can make these objects using parametrically defined curves. So it's kind of a cool way to kind of bring math into art. We're like making these seashell looking things. Okay, but now let's go back to some easier examples. So we have 
uh, cosine t sine t was our unit circle, if you remember that. But now what we're going to do is affect the amplitude over x and our y. So now we're going to make it 5 cosine t and 3 sine t. And what I want you to recognize is we don't have to do too much more work here because we can just take this table and multiply each of these values by 5 and these values by 3. So your fill-in table should look like this. 5 root 3 over 2, 5 root 2 over 2, 5 times 1 half, 5 times 0, right? All of these values are now 5 times bigger. All of these values are now 3 times bigger. So what kind of shape does that make? Just an ellipse, right? We take all of our x values and make them 5 times bigger. It stretches it out 5 times this way. We take all of our y values, make them 3 times bigger. It stretches it out that way, right? And now we have an ellipse where we say that the semi major axis is equal to five and the semi minor axis is equal to three. So the major one is always the bigger one, minor is always smaller, and it's just convention to make the major one A and the minor one B when we, uh, when we generalize this, right? So A is the semi major axis, B is the semi minor axis, and, and now we can define ellipses of different shapes and sizes. So if we, we can look at a couple examples here. Okay, our semi-major axis is 6, our semi-minor axis is 2, okay, and, and so our x value is 2 cosine t, and then we have 6 sine t, okay. Our semi-major axis is 4, our semi-minor axis is 2, and then in this case, they're both equal to 4, right, and that just makes a circle of radius 4. So this will always tell you how far to stretch in the x direction and how far to stretch in the y direction. So that is it for that worksheet, and that is it for day one. So hopefully at this point you have finished the Unit 9 Day 1 worksheet, you've watched all three videos for the lecture, and now you should be able to work on your problem set as guided in the Google Doc.